Hi, I'm Matt Van Hook. This is a video summary of our recent paper published in the Journal of General Physiology entitled Calmodulin Enhances Ribbon Replenishment and Shapes Filtering of Synaptic Transmission by Cone Photoreceptors. At the first synapse in the visual pathway, rod and cone photoreceptors release the neurotransmitter glutamate onto postsynaptic, horizontal, and bipolar cells. This process is regulated by a proteinaceous structure called the synaptic ribbon, which is located within the photoreceptor terminal. It sits above the presynaptic membrane and tethers synaptic vesicles, readying them for exocytosis. There are two functionally distinct vesicle pools tethered to the ribbon, and the ribbon is replenished from a reservoir pool located in the cytoplasm. Exocytosis is triggered by calcium influx through L-type calcium channels, which are located at the base of the ribbon. In addition to triggering exocytosis, calcium appears to accelerate the resupply of vesicles to the ribbon. In this study, we set out to determine whether the calcium signaling protein calmodulin is responsible for the calcium-dependent acceleration of replenishment, and if it is, we wanted to determine how that happens. Additionally, we sought to determine how that process plays a role in shaping synaptic transmission by cones. We first began to explore this process using paired pulse stimulation protocols with paired voltage clamp recordings of cones and horizontal cells in vertical slices from salamander retinas. By measuring the paired pulse ratio, we were able to fit the data with a sum of two exponential functions with a fast time constant of 800 milliseconds and a slower time constant of 13 seconds, indicating that two processes with distinct kinetics were responsible for regulating resupply of vesicles to the ribbon. We use two approaches to explore the way that calcium influences this process. In the first, we included the fast calcium chelator BAPTA in the cone patch pipette. This reduces the spread of calcium from the channels in the terminal, preventing big increases in average calcium concentration. When we did this, the recovery from synaptic depression was slowed, and fitting the data indicated that the major effect of BAPTA was to reduce the amplitude of the fast recovery process. In the second, we BATH applied a low concentration of the L-type calcium channel blocker nifedipine to slightly reduce calcium influx. Doing this had a similar effect to BAPTA, reducing the amplitude of the fast recovery process. We next performed experiments to determine whether and how calmodulin is involved in this process. In our experiments, we used two approaches to inhibit calmodulin. In the first, we applied a small molecule calmodulin inhibitor, which slowed the recovery process. We also used a calmodulin inhibiting peptide called MLCK. When we included this peptide in the presynaptic patch pipette, recovery from synaptic depression was also slowed. When we used a control version of this peptide, the recovery in the paired pulse protocol resembled the time course we measured in control experiments. Together, these experiments indicate that calcium and calmodulin quicken the recovery from synaptic depression by enhancing the fast recovery mechanism. To understand the processes that might limit replenishment, we developed an analytical model of vesicle diffusion in the cone synapse. In this model, synaptic vesicles undergo random walks in a three-dimensional rectangular lattice with a spacing of 45 nanometers, which is equal to the vesicle diameter. Vesicles move throughout the terminal with a diffusion coefficient of 0.11 microns squared per second. Based on ultrastructural measurements, the vesicle density in the terminal is 2,210 vesicles per cubic micron. S is the probability that a vesicle will attach to the ribbon upon collision. The probability of any one lattice site becoming occupied in a time step is equal to the vesicle density per lattice site. Because the ribbon can only be approached from one side, we divide this by two. The probability of having to wait at least t seconds before a vesicle attaches to a ribbon site is given by the, this function, with t over delta t being the total number of steps elapsed in t seconds. Thus, if we start with an empty ribbon, the estimated number of vesicle sites that are filled at time t is given by this function, where n is the maximum number of vesicles that can occupy the ribbon. Using a definition of the diffusion coefficient, along with the probability of a vesicle attaching to the ribbon, we find we can represent the number of vesicles on the ribbon with this function. As we describe in more detail in the paper, this model allowed us to derive a fundamental time constant governing the rate of vesicle resupply to the ribbon. 
the time constant is equal to 1 divided by the product of the diffusion coefficient, the density, the vesicle spacing, and the attachment probability. If we assume that the attachment probability is 1, meaning that all colliding vesicles attach, this gives a time constant of 91 milliseconds. This is roughly an order of magnitude faster than our empirically measured fast time constant of replenishment, implying that other factors beyond the rate of vesicle collisions with the ribbon, such as attachment probability being less than 1, play an important role in slowing down vesicle replenishment. We next develop two variations of this model to explore whether calcium and calmodulin ultimately act on the ribbon or act on vesicles to quicken the replenishment process. In the first variant of the model, we assume that changes in attachment probability are the result of modifications to vesicles themselves. This assumes that there are two populations of vesicles. Those in population A have a higher attachment probability, while those in B have a lower attachment probability. Thus, the probability that a vesicle colliding with the ribbon will result in attachment is a weighted average of the individual attachment probabilities. In this scenario, the number of vesicles on the ribbon at a given time is governed by a single time constant, and if calcium and calmodulin change the fraction of vesicles in each population, it will simply change that time constant. In the second variant of the model, we assume that changes in attachment probability result from changes at vesicle attachment sites on the ribbon. As a result, there are two populations of ribbon sites with different attachment probabilities, and all vesicles are identical. This gives us two expressions for the probability that a given vesicle attachment site becomes occupied. In this scenario, the number of vesicles on the ribbon at a given time is governed by two time constants, and because the changes in attachment probability occur at individual sites on the ribbon, inhibition of calcium and calmodulin is expected to lead to a change in the amplitudes of each component of this function. To summarize, if calcium and calmodulin ultimately influence the ribbon to regulate attachment probability, this predicts the existence of two time constants and that changes in attachment probability change the amplitude carried by each time constant. This aligns more closely with the data, suggesting that calmodulin ultimately acts on attachment sites on the ribbon. We next wanted to determine how calcium and calmodulin influence synaptic transmission by cones. Synaptic depression typically acts as a low-pass filter, suppressing responses to rapidly changing stimuli while allowing transmission of slowly changing responses. We therefore hypothesize that enhancing recovery from synaptic depression by quickening the resupply of vesicles to the ribbon would enable the synapse to more ably respond to rapidly changing stimuli. To test this, we recorded the responses of individual off-bipolar cells or horizontal cells to flashes of varying duration. Here, the transient inward current at light offset represents release of glutamate from cones as they depolarize with the transition to darkness. This was inhibited by the calmodulin inhibitor calmidazolium, especially following shorter flashes. These results indicate that calmodulin-dependent quickening of replenishment enhances the ability of the cone synapse to signal light offset during rapidly changing conditions. We also approach this question by using sinusoidal light stimuli while recording from horizontal cells and on bipolar cells. In these experiments, the responses decrease in amplitude as frequency of the stimulus increases. In the presence of the calmodulin inhibitor, the responses shift so that the amplitude of the response fell off at lower frequencies than in control conditions. In other words, when calmodulin-dependent replenishment is inhibited, the synapse has a harder time keeping up with the higher frequency stimuli. To summarize, we found that a fast component of vesicle replenishment to the ribbon in cones is dependent on calcium and calmodulin. Using an analytical model of the vesicle dynamics in the cone synaptic terminal, we were able to derive a fundamental time constant governing this replenishment process that can be readily applied to study similar processes at other synapses. In the cone synapse, it appears that the vesicle density and diffusion coefficient are high enough so that the rate of collisions with the synaptic ribbon is not rate limiting for replenishment. Calmodulin also appears to influence vesicle sites on the synaptic ribbon rather than vesicles themselves to enhance attachment probability. Finally, we found that the calcium and calmodulin-dependent acceleration of replenishment enhances the ability of the synapse to encode and transmit higher frequency responses. We're grateful for the funding sources that have supported this work. These include grants from the National Eye Institute, Research to Prevent Blindness, Fight for Sight, and the National Science Foundation. Thank you for your time and attention.